the social media has really changed perception of brands. Absolutely. And so how that all gets done, I think every, um, depending on the age of the company, uh, younger companies, probably a little bit longer duration. Older companies, I think every five or so years, you need to step back and look at your brand and you need to say, does insight. it still reflect the culture of the company, what we're doing, our primary business focus, what is our value proposition? You'd be surprised at how many organizations can't even artic articulate their value proposition. So <laughs> how, can you, how yeah. can you go back and, and refresh your brand if you can't even describe what it is you are, what, is you are, what you do? Right? And what, how does that happen? Because we see it all the time. It happens in a lot of our clients. Well, I think sometimes it's success. Sometimes you've, you've been so successful at what you do, and, and you start looking at the top line the bottom line. If it's a public company, you start looking at earnings per share. And I used to say as, as a marketing advisor, the worst thing a company can do is lead on, on based on earnings per share. That's right. You've got to always look at where your markets are, where the penetrations are, what your segmentation looks like. You know, what is your value proposition? Well, how do your products fit in the marketplace? And, and constantly go back and look at it. But sometimes success causes you to become a little agnostic about your brand. And I think that's, that's the last thing you want to, that's the last aspect of your business that you want to become agnostic about, and that is your brand. You always want to keep it front of mind, and you always going to keep probing and questioning how relevant is it. I'll give you a great example. Today, because of the internet and social media, uh, we make a purchase, and typically within minutes of making that purchase, we get a satisfaction survey that comes right. through. And that satisfaction survey is not only asking questions about the service that was rendered, but they're asking questions that are subliminally brand related. Mm -hmm. And so their brand managers and their brand strategists are looking at that data when it comes in, and they're making fine-tuned adjustments to the brand so that almost real time. So that the, the term I like, so yeah. it always resonates. Yep. You want your brand always resonate. And I think for a smaller business, the best thing to do is ask your customers, does my brand make sense? When you see things come from my organization, my company, does it fit? Does it make sense? And I'll tell Sounds you... Sounds like listen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i tell you, the other thing that's interesting uh, about this is I always ask the question, coming from my design background, does it work in black and white? If the yeah. brand and the mark and the font and the topography works in black and white, that's a good litmus test because you never know that the person that's receiving the brand message, the quality of the printer or whatever they're gonna print that out on could be very inferior. So if your right. brand's super articulated, uh, the, the, the art of it is super articulated, sometimes it doesn't translate. So you have to always ask the receiver on the other end, you know, does it, it, does it really work? I, I like using the analogy, you're a football guy, I like using the analogy of, of the quarterback, you know, uh, that quarterback's got to constantly look at making sure he's sending that pass in a way that the receiver can catch it. Can catch it, right? Darn sure count how many incompletions a quarterback has. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm all about branding, being very intentional, making sure you send that message and it's laser focused, and you know that the person receiving it, the audience receiving it on the other side, um, uh, is getting the message you intend. 